My name is Thomas Costanzo, and uh, about six years ago I met Bob Podolsky in uh, Florida. And when he gave his presentation at the meeting I was at, I immediately knew he knew some things I didn't know and needed to know. Anyway, I've uh, been good friends with Bob for uh, since 2005, I think. And uh, now he's moved out here to Arizona. And he has a lot of information that I think that is necessary for creating a better world. And in order to create a better world, the first thing that starts with is being a better person. So he's an accomplished uh, psychotherapist, and he has uh, some information on how you can make your life better with uh, some of the tools that he's learned from uh, 25 years of practice. So I'd like to introduce you, Bob Podolsky. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Thomas is a really good egg. And when I get a, an introduction like that from him, I'm always really happy about it because he's very selective about who he says nice things about, believe it or not. I say nice things about everybody. <laughs> well, I can think of some exceptions. Yeah. This evening, I'm going to talk about some very specific skill sets that I'm prepared to teach. But I want to put it in context, kind of a broader context. Uh, some of you have known me for a little while. Some of you have recently met me. Uh, I've been involved since 19, let's see, when did I start? In 74, I actually started, I decided I'm going to do things in my life where I can see people's lives improve as a result. Because prior to that, I'd been a scientist, and I worked in a cubicle. This was before the days of desktop computers. <clears throat> so I had you know, the computers down the hall in the big computer room, and I've got a calculating machine on my desk, I think the size of a big typewriter. And, you know, you put numbers in it, and you want to hit the square root thing, and it goes ka-chunk, 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 ka-chunk. Out comes the square root. Anyway. In those circumstances, I never saw people's lives get better because of what I was doing. And I got really frustrated with that. So I like seeing people's lives get better. So I got retrained, became a psychotherapist, and I learned a number of skill sets in order to be able to do effective therapy with people. I then went on to kind of look for what would therapy be for humanity as a whole. Because humanity is suffering, you've noticed, right? I mean, humanity is, oh, we're on the brink of extinction, I think. I have reason to think that. But anyway, uh, hopefully we can avert the extinction and improve the lives of everyone. But certain things have to happen for that to take place. And my first, way back in the 70s, early 70s, I began asking the question, in fact, I started asking this question in 71, what must happen for humanity to thrive? What must happen? What has to change? And then, once I identified that, I could address how can the change take place? Can it take place? Is it too late? Hope not. I don't know. The only way to find out is to forge ahead making the changes as we're able, and see if we get there. We will or we won't. And if we don't, we'll be extinct. Too bad. I don't relish extinction. <laughs> I may be strange that way, but I don't like the idea of my species becoming extinct. Uh, Stephen Hawking, the famous uh, physicist, uh, recently said, <clears throat> we only have a thousand years or less to get off the planet. That if we don't get if we don't seed the, the galaxy uh, with our species, there's a good chance we will become extinct. So he and I agree on that, except I don't think we've got a thousand years. I think we're lucky if we have a thousand days. <clears throat> so, okay. Well, I'm going to share with you very briefly to give you a context for the main thing I'm going to talk about. I'm going to share with you a kind of a overview of humanity and what's going on with us and where things could go. In the big picture, this is like how society organizes its institutions. Whew. Well, <clears throat> so far, the dominant 
organizational model has been hierarchy. Looks like a pyramid, doesn't it? CEO, or maybe the board of the chief of the head of the, the uh, head of the board of directors of a corporation, say, some presidents and vice presidents and managers and on down and down and down and down. A hierarchy. And it turns out that this mechanism is one of the biggest causes of the problems that we have. Now, I might mention. <clears throat> Most people think we have a lot of problems. Would you agree with that? Humanity has a lot of problems. We've got hunger and warfare and genocide and crime and addiction and... Mm. Bombs blowing up at uh, races. Right, bombs. Mm -hmm. Terrorism. I'm here to tell you we only have one problem. Not many. All those things are symptoms of the same thing. Symptoms. You know, it's like you got the flu, you got chills, you got fever, you got a sore throat. These are all symptoms of one central problem. And that is that the institutions we have that we turn to for solutions to our humanity's problems, they consistently make highly unethical decisions. It's that simple. If they were making ethical decisions, the problems would go away. Well, what do you know? Now, if this were the only thing I was talking about this evening, I'd spend the whole evening talking just about that. And I can. I can speak for, on that subject for three days nonstop <laughs> and not repeat myself. But that's not what we're doing tonight. I just wanted to do this as part of the overall picture, that hierarchy is a problem. Now, <clears throat> I also want to mention that there's certain resources that are very important for humanity to thrive. Creativity is one of them. Uh, love. Mm, objective truth. That's truth in the scientific sense of the word. Awareness. Forgive my bad handwriting. These resources, and many, many related resources, are logically equivalent to one another. Which means if I increase any one of them, they all increase. And if I limit or diminish any of them, they're all limited or diminished. And it turns out everything we love in life comes from these resources. Okay, I, I refer to them collectively as creativity, but they're logically equivalent. If I increase love in the world, creativity increases. If I limit objective truth in the world, creativity is limited or diminished. All right, so <clears throat> we need to get away from this hierarchic model. And this is really a very simple concept, okay? Bev, if you and I wanted to go have lunch together, for example, would I tell you where we're going to go, or would we decide it together? Hopefully, we decided together, right? Hopefully. <laughs> well, you'd say, well, I want to go here, and I'd say, well, I'd like to go there, and gee, where's the, you know, where's the food that we can both enjoy, and so on. We'd come to an agreement, mutually. This is how business is conducted in the presence of a free market, okay? This is how people who are ethical deal with each other. We don't tell each other what to do. This hierarchic system is a system whereby people tell one another what to do. And that has all kinds of terrible effects. I won't go into the details, but it's a bad way to organize. Well, a friend of mine, a very dear friend, for the, between 1984 and 2001, when he died, John David Garcia came up with another way of organizing. And he did 20 years of research to perfect it. I worked with him for a number of those years, doing the research and polishing the system. <clears throat> we build groups this way. This is a group of eight people, four men and four women. 
I'll let you decide whether the squares represent the man or the women. Or the squares. <laughs> Eight people, okay? And these people trained together for about three days to learn how to do certain things together, including making unanimous decisions. Because they don't vote. There's no majority rule. If everyone doesn't agree, we don't do it. Whatever it is. Okay, unanimous decisions. It takes a little practice to learn how to do that. We also have a, a, a shared meditative process that amplifies the creativity of the group. And periodically, we meet one of these amplification sessions. It's kind of like, it's, it's, a, it's a synchronized meditation. It's like sharing a dream when you're doing it. It feels great. And it's very creative. These people get to be your friends, you hang out with them, you trust them. Compare that with being in a corporation somewhere. Have, have you guys worked in a big corporation ever? Mm. No? Well, you're lucky. <laughs> because most people work in a hierarchic situation, and if it isn't a corporation, it's a cartel. And we'll get into that another time. I'll tell you firsthand, it's very aggravating for a creative person to be under that. Yeah, you ought to know. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, so I spent more than 10 years working in this hierarchic kind of setting. I did work in industry, ACO, GE, FedEx. And I worked for government. I worked for the Air Force at the avionics lab at Wright-Patterson. And I worked for the Coast Guard at their engineering headquarters in Washington, D.C. And I hated it. <clears throat> Have you seen the cartoon Dilbert? That was my life, in the cubicle, you know, with all these bizarre, strange, weird, stupid people around. Anyway, <clears throat> this kind of group, we call an octolog, because there are eight people, usually four men and four women, G-U-E, octolog, and they have to be trained in the ethics, so they understand sophisticated ethics, now, you might think it takes years for someone to learn that, but it's not true. <clears throat> you can learn sophisticated ethics in a day. One day. And become really good at it. I did that years ago, incorporated it into my life, and my life has gotten better ever since. It helps. It's a cool thing to know about. Ethics. I'll put that up here. When I was a young man, I thought it was a trivial subject. Now I know it's the most important subject for any of us to know. Okay, so this is an octologue. What if I've got a big ethical project? I want to build infrastructure. I want to build roads and bridges and who knows what else. Or build a company that makes flying cars. I don't know. Lots of different things we could do with enough creativity. Well, it takes more than eight people to do these big things. So what do we do? Well, we get another octologue going. Maybe this guy over here goes out and recruits people to make up an, another octologue, and they make a contract with each other. <clears throat> this combined thing I call a holomat. Holomat. And there's no limit to how big it can be. There could be a billion people in the holomat with good contract between each of the octologues. Hmm. Well now, with that kind of structure, you can do big projects. And so I decided some years ago, I'm going to teach people how to do this. I'm going to give a workshop. One of these days real soon, I'll be inviting you to a workshop on how do you build octologues and holomats and make them work. <clears throat> this is part of the context of what I'm going to talk about tonight. But it's important, because if I didn't mention this stuff, you'd go away wondering, well, what's the point of this more detailed stuff that we're going to talk about? Well, the point is that in order to have an ethical society that works cooperatively, where you are constantly in the presence of people who are your friends and trusted partners, you better have some preparation, because we're not used to that. You know, very few people live today in that kind of environment. 
but I want everyone to live that way. With total freedom over what kind of projects they take on, whether this group is a business, a charity, a school, a school system, a legal system, you name it, if it's worth doing, this is the way to do it. Because there's no hierarchy, no one tells you what to do, everyone is an equal partner in this thing. It's really cool. All right, so how do we get there? Well, one way is I'm doing these meetings. Bring your friends to my meetings. Spread the word. As a matter of fact, as that starts happening more, there's going to be money to be made doing that. 